What makes magpie murders so interesting is the whodunit in the whodunit. You know, it's the play within the play. This series mixes them together in a, in a very unusual and I think quite delightful way. Well, Magpie Murders has two very distinct sections to it. Susan Ryland exists in the modern world, the present day, but the book she's editing and which we dramatise is set in 1955. So half the time you're in the present and half the time you are back then. The two time frames, they kind of oscillate together like that. And so you learn about one from the other. It will be wonderful for cutting between the two different storylines and seeing the echoes between the two stories. And that just felt like an irresistible challenge, for a creative challenge for a director in terms of the look, um, the editing, music and everything, the way we can weave these two worlds and the transitions from one to the other. The tone of the 55 world came to us um, quite quickly through thinking about films of the era like Third Man and Hitchcock, plus some more kind of contemporary detective shows and detective films. So, we kind of cohered around that. We, we talked about doing like Dutch shots, quite high contrast images. Um, we had some discussions about possibly shooting 55 in black and white. And then the contemporary world, we really, we knew we wanted clean shots. So instead of kind of shooting over the shoulders with bits of shoulder and foreground, we, as much as we could, we just tried to isolate the characters in portraits. And almost all of the contemporary scenes were told through Susan, through Leslie Mandel's character. So it was very important to frame her as, as the kind of key protagonist through which everything else unravels. So a lot of kind of clean portrait shots of her were very important. Because that's the kind of person he was. He played games and they were always games designed to hurt people. We're looking at the way that we light things differently and frame things differently between 21 and 55. And that's gonna be quite fun because we're using the same village but we're going to, it's going to just look with the colour adjustments slightly different. So we're in the village of Kersey today, which is where most of the 1955 story occurs. And it's the most beautiful, quintessential English country village. You feel that time has stood still here. Everywhere you turn the camera works and it's kind of pretty much unchanged from 1955. We even found old photos of it in 55 and it stayed the same. The location department did a really good job and the people of Kersey were just lovely. People were really helpful, it was great. It let us just use their houses and we had to move all the contemporary cars out of the high street. We could just sometimes just change our minds on the spur of a moment or can we shoot it outside your house? People were totally cool, it was lovely. It's been great fun playing with the echoes and even the things like Clarissa Pye's house and Claire Jenkins' house where we've got the same shots and you've got like an old kettle and a new kettle and you've got an old toaster and a new toaster. And I kind of hope that people love the show, they can actually look back and kind of spot all these little echoes. It's such a collaborative thing, you know, you, you only see the end result on the screen, but the conversations and the working process to arrive at how you create the whole of the character, their environment, as well as how they look and, and how they are. I hope audiences are going to get a great deal of pleasure out of this series because we are dealing with these two worlds. I mean, doubling up with locations, I mean, that's going to be incredibly difficult for production designers and I'm really, really looking forward to see how they, how they do that. Like the attention to detail they put into all the sets was just amazing and we were continually just walking onto these like very, very narratively rich and sort of gorgeous sets. I think it'll be a delight in so many ways.